Hey everybody, my name is Wyatt and I'm Fur Tunes and today we finally got a brand new episode of Diving In where I go headfirst into an artist's discography analyzing my thought process from album to album and today oh, I can hardly contain my excitement because we are finally covering another Kate Bush album her unfathomably revered Hounds of Love. So quite a few months ago now, I was going through my girlfriend's old vinyl collection, which has countless original pressings from the 70s and 80s that her parents just kept around. I had already been through this collection many times before, but this time I found something that really caught my eye and made my jaw drop. I see Hounds of Love by Kate Bush. I had always heard about her, but I knew that like this was like the album from her, you know? I always saw this album on like the greatest of of all time lists and I remembered quite a few months ago even past that my mom telling me to listen to her when I was really into Bjork so yeah I tossed it on I listened like not on the best speakers and the vinyl itself was old and fairly dusty but it still had me so clusterfucked like the first half just completely and utterly blew me away like it's oh my god this is like one of the best things i've ever heard already like one of those listens like i really am actively hearing one of the best albums ever made for the first time i didn't take that all in because the second half really just threw me for a massive loop left me a bit confused so i waited two weeks after my first listen and i listened to it again so i could get a proper first reaction video for this video so while it's technically not my first ever reaction it may as well be i found more than i could have ever imagined in this album even on my fourth and fifth listens and i found myself just spinning this album multiple times a week just to try and figure out the full picture this is like the last two months like this this has been a process and there is a lot to unpack here so let's waste no more time <sighs> Like it's... So yeah, running up that hill, a deal with God. Oh, <laughs> what do I even say? This is one of the most freeing songs I've ever heard. Like, just to its core. It's effortlessly fun, very dreamy, and endlessly catchy, while feeling so powerful with emotion. Yo, like it's... Oh, I did not notice the little... I take quite a few meanings away from this song, I think everybody can, but at its core it makes me feel that dissonant feeling of missing or wanting something that you know can never be. Whether the song is overall hopeful or a bit eerie because of that, I don't think anyone can deny how comforting this song can be while it's on. And that it's one of, if not the most luscious pop song like ever made. Man, this song is perfect. Like just a 10 out of 10 if I've ever heard one. Nothing more, nothing less. Just absolutely. Holy shit, like, it didn't hit like this on the, oh. This is actually like, uh, I love the drums. I don't know why they're like my favorite part, Loki. Yo, that sounds like Phil Collins, straight up. Now, the first time I heard the title track, Hounds of Love, I remember enjoying it, obviously, but I remember it kind of flying by, and before I knew it, we were onto the big sky. But the more I listened, the more I fell in love with the drums on here, Kate's vocals, of course, and the uh, 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 in the back, it is like godly on the ears. Oh my god. <laughs> And the string section in the chorus, like, what the fuck? Like, it can't get much better than this, can it? Like, we're only two songs in. Like, this literally isn't fair. This is... Oh my god. <laughs> Holy shit. That is amazing. Just so stunning. Like, just casually two of the best pop songs I'll ever hear. Make that three, and fucking nine more to go. 
the fuck? But then, literally before I know it, every single time, I don't even have a chance to take in how stunned I am from the first two tracks, and we are on to the big sky. Or as I like to call it, the greatest fucking song ever made, ever, by any human ever, in history, ever. <laughs> like... How is this so good? How? Oh my god. This song is like all of the music came together to form the best music. What? Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> like, this is amazing. Oh, bang. Like, slap and uh... Oh, the bass? Okay, like, bruh. Seriously though, so many forms of traditional music come together in this massive odyssey of an absolute banger of a pop rock song. It's anthemic, it's life-affirming, it's wondrous, it's a whole expedition of sound. I can't help but just want to dance around freely in a big field of grass and just not paying attention to wherever I am and just feel like I'm flying to the big sky for real. <laughs> Like, I'm... My favorite song on here, for sure. I enjoy everything, but th this just has something else for me, you know? When the background vocals really start popping in the second half, it's just one of those awe-inspiring, like, tear-jerking moments. It's just so big and glorious and beautiful, timeless song. <laughs> And with the next song, we can kind of finally have like a calm down, a bit of a breather from the overwhelming excitement of the first three singles. Uh... Mother Stands for Comfort is so hypnotic. It puts you in this lovely, blissful trance or dreamlike state that personally, I don't know what it feels like literally, but it, it makes me feel like I am a little baby back inside the womb. All I know is the comfort of mother and the strange sounds that sometimes make its way through the wall of flesh that I am living in. These come through big time in the percussion here, echoey vocal effects and numerous layers that just feel mystifying. Dude, like, are you fucking kidding me? Dog, this dead ass sounds like you could release it today. <sighs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Now, Cloud Busting, aside from the more out there cuts on the second half, this was definitely the song that grew on me the most. I just love the lyrics for being vague enough to really portray almost any kind of situation or emotion. Whatever it brings out of you first must mean a lot, you know what I mean? The string section is so tight here, and again, just like the big sky, these background vocals come in about the halfway point, and it's just this ever-evolving, luscious, fun, catchy pop song that is just so good at scary. This is nice, yeah, a little slow builder, but once we get going, it's so pleasant, like. Another one that just, like, a minute into the song, I'm like, oh, this is so fun, this is cute, this is great, and then by the end of the song, I'm, like, laying there just in space, just thinking, like, I've never heard something so fucking glorious. Yeah, like, alright. <laughs> this track won me the fuck over. Like, I, I liked it at first, I thought it was cool, but it just progressively made me fall in love with it. And we are now at the halfway point of the album, and I'm gonna get a little bit looser with the track list for time's sake, but I know this whole side is a loose story from song to song of someone falling asleep while lost at sea, drifting through a couple nightmares and probably vivid hallucinations. This side of the album 
freaked me the fuck out on first listen. I'm just be straight up. I was more confused than anything though. I just had no idea this album was kind of split into two parts, even though it says on the vinyl. So once the atmosphere really started growing very eerie and some pretty whacked out experimental sounds started coming out of the speakers, I truthfully didn't know how to take it. I wasn't listening to it as a regular album anymore. I just knew that there was something huge going on here that I just could not even come close to fathom at the time. Even on the second and third listen, it was like frightening to me that I just couldn't make anything certain of that whole second half. It felt like an abstract movie where I'm insanely invested and interested, I'm enjoying it, but I have no idea what the fuck is going on. This isn't so much the case for the first two tracks, Dream of Sheep is a full-blown lullaby. Aside from Mother Stands for Comfort, this is easily the most serene or somber moment on the album. Do I have to say anything? No. Like, so relaxing, just to my core, I feel peace. <laughs> like, oh. And Under Ice, as frightening as it is, you kind of get the whole vibe right away. Even if you don't understand the story, you just know something is up. Something is not good. Not that she doesn't lay out very clearly what's happening in the lyrics, I just didn't really catch the story on my first few listens. This song weirdly gives me animals vibes, like the Pink Floyd album. Just in the songwriting, the urgency and the dramatics in Kate's vocals and the impending creepiness that just keeps growing. I know she worked with David Gilmore quite a bit around this time and it it, it really makes sense. I'll, there's quite a few moments on here that either remind me of like animals or the wall. Maybe that's just their very broad influence on music like as a whole. Maybe I'm just a Pink Floyd stan. Either way, it's fucking amazing. <laughs> Like, Under the Ice is a vivid song. It is absolutely daunting. The more you immerse yourself into it, the easier it is to picture yourself out there experiencing what she's singing about. And, like... <sighs> like, I listen to the song Under the Night Sky by the Water headphones, and I just... <sighs> I can't, I can't, I can't even try to describe what the fuck fuck that's like. And the whole album sort of plays on that rule from here on out. The more thought you give to what you're hearing, the more you're gonna find to enjoy. At least that was my case. Waking the Witch is by far the most out there song here. No competition. Okay. This track weirded me the fuck out. Like completely took me out for a minute and I was like, what the fuck is happening? So. Let's give it another try. My first, like, seven or eight listens, I had no idea what to make of it. It doesn't take a creative genius to realize that this is some sort of dream sequence, but the immediate glitchy vocals that pop in with these rapid strumming guitars just send this track into another dimension within seconds. <laughs> Like, uh, it's like so impressive, all these sounds for like, you know, the time, but this is fucking insane. Like, it feels quite literally like being violently pulled from the heights of heaven to the depths of hell. Just very intense, confusing, disorienting. And again, on the first few goes, I just struggled to make anything of this song. I felt that the glitchy vocal effects and the demon voice sounded a bit dated at first. But the more I listened and paid attention to directly that, and the more I realized how this effect was used, and hearing it again in a little spurt on the ending of the next track, it really made me realize how cool of an addition this was, and it really doesn't sound bad. It's just daunting. It takes a minute for the ears to adjust, you know? The demon voice is a, l a little odd for me, but I'm really I'm starting to see what this song is about, and it's it's pretty sick. I don't know if I'll be returning to it solo, but as a part of the album, like it, it's it's hitting. Oh lord, like you know. 
I'm gonna need to look up like what this song is like about though, because I am not seeing the full picture. I'm just hearing wild sounds. We then transition into what I can only describe as some sort of blissful purgatory. It feels like life's loading screen. I don't know why <laughs> the percussion and the grooves that start the song off give me Crash Bandicoot vibes. And that is the best compliment I have ever given any music. <laughs> Cause you see that? That's the goat right there. Yeah, like this is weird as fuck. Sounds mad good, like. The themes on this song too really get me reminiscing, but I can't help but feel like the effortless groove on this song just overcomes the sadness of the lyrics, and I just find myself bobbing to this one. It's such an easy listen, it's so nice. All the percussion like on here has been flawless, especially like when it's like subtle on tracks like this, but it just... It's so like... And then, of all things to come next, What the fuck do I say about this fucking Pirates of the Caribbean ass song? It's important to note that this song was written and arranged in Ireland and Kate herself said it was very directly inspired by the Irish countryside. It's important to note that because the arrangement is so, so cool. Like it's great, but it's just so unorthodox for a pop album. Like obviously this is much more than just a pop album, but Jesus Christ, the whole sound of this song was just the last thing I expected getting to this point in the album. Okay, like, this is wild. Like it, like this is some, I'm so mad, I forgot the fucking- Anyways, from here we go directly to space. Out of nowhere, just a full-blown ambient track. Very drawn out, very easy to get lost in. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. This song feels like a detrimental meditation, if you get what I mean. I read this article kind of going over the story of the album song by song, and it really helped me shape the vague pictures that would pop in my head as I would listen blindly. I really recommend checking it out, especially for songs like this. Reading the explanations sort of blew my mind and made me appreciate this song tenfold. <laughs> Wake you right the fuck up. Wow. <laughs> the last song throws you for one last loop. Maybe the most pleasant one yet as you sort of bounce out of this prolonged vivid dream sequence. Even just as a listener, getting to this point in the album really feels like waking up after a long creepy nightmare and you just realizing that you're okay, you're at home, and you have a whole new day ahead of you really pulling yourself out of yesterday's slump as this pleasant jingle plays, calming you to the core and allowing you to feel ready for whatever's next in this wild life. Oh. Oh. You've gotta love that, man, always. Oh, this is such a good fucking outro. This brings me right back to like, the first half. I'm sorry, I, I like the first half a whole lot better than the second half. <sighs> like, that is a fucking album. <laughs> like, yeah. I sort of take this song as maybe a bit weird, but a bit of a coming of age song. Maybe this whole album is in its own abstract way, or maybe I'm just interpreting it that way. Might be a bit of a stretch, but that's what I feel. There's plenty of meaning behind each line here, an overflow of emotions coming through in every instrument, and detailed, vivid imagery in the atmospheres across the board here. This album is actually phenomenal like one of the best ever made seriously it took me a while to really see the hype like i thought this was a great album the moment i finished it for the first time but i've listened to it at least a dozen times now and i can't help but just be completely floored by everything kate brought to the table here she just did an unbelievable job at packing this album with so much varied emotion and feeling 
atmosphere, songwriting, production, instrumentation, creativity, album flow, storytelling, everything that could possibly come to your mind when someone may ask you, hey, what do you look for in a great album? Kate Bush delivers tenfold on Hounds of Love. And I think... That's all I have to say. After literal months with this album and weeks of trying to write this fucking video, oh, it feels like a weight has lifted off my shoulders. I have been enjoying this thing thoroughly, but struggling to really put everything down. I knew I had to just do a track list song for song style because there really was just so much to unpack here. And even once I thought I had the full picture and I was just kind of listening as I was writing, I would find myself say, oh fuck, I didn't really take in that little weird vocal layer. Or whatever the hell. It's just such a mystifying, magical experience expedition of an album. It's just, it's 50 minutes, it's under 50 minutes actually, and sometimes it feels like it's an hour and a half, like a whole The Wall type of Pink Floyd experience type of album. You get what I'm trying to say? I'm, my brain... Thank you so so much to my mama for putting me on to Kate Bush and I, I didn't listen to her for a while But hey now we're here making the videos, so it all worked out Thank you to everyone who suggested that I do Kate Bush for a diving in series I covered the kick inside and I, I wasn't really happy with how the video came out Because I feel like I didn't have too much to say about the album as much as I liked it But you can check that out right there if you like there's a bunch of other diving in videos. The playlist will be in the description. I've done so many artists at this point and many more to come. I've got quite a few, a lot that people have been requesting. I'm working on it in the next week. So stay tuned, a lot more videos coming. Thank you for being patient while I kind of work through this week has been crazy with real life jobs, everything, and especially for the tunes, my main priority. So thank you so much for watching. Please tell me your favorite song from this album or your favorite Kate Bush song. I'm gonna be covering a few more of her albums for sure. I can't guarantee when those videos will be coming, but they definitely will be. Because, wow, she just has me on a hook now. Like, I have to go through the rest of the discography, right? Like, I, I have to. Join the damn Discord if you want to talk to some super cool people about some super cool music. The Furta family is at well over 200 motherfuckers now, and it's just great. It's all love in there. Join it. Subscribe to stay tuned. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter. All that good stuff is in the description. Much love, and just thank you again.